Check this out. Check this welcome, out. welcome to BLBA Big Show. Hockey sports, life for the adult athletes. Yeah. Powered by the Beer League Players Association. You better follow me. Follow us. The BLBA on every social media outlet. Follow the crew on Twitter at Nicker Jones. And let's get it. Here we go. Here we go. Welcome to the greatest sports show in the world. Good week, everybody. It's a great week. We're back. We've got a mystery guest. We got Jess. And a mystery guest, I mean, he's going to be a, a new host, hopefully. We'll get to that in a second. But I just want to say it's so good to be back. So good. Uh, I mean, it's been uh, almost two months since we've done our last show. And I know I know the beer league world is ready for us to be back. Look at Jess in the, the fake locker room back there i would say i would try to pass it over as real but you kind of go blurry around the edges and i didn't want to i don't want to fool anyone i don't want to be ethically sound on this podcast jess how are you doing i'm doing great nick how are you doing today oh i'm doing great i mean we're we're busy as hell we got a lot of tournaments coming up and uh it's good to have a little break but then i i start missing hockey and now i'm glad to be back into it so um we're going to talk about our hockey. We played in SoCal together uh, and then there's Philadelphia. And now I'm trying to talk you into way more tournaments. Uh, so we're going to talk about those soon, but I want to introduce our new guy. Our new guy is Kevin. Kevin, what's going on, bud? I'm already getting hassled in the chat. I can see it. No way. No way. Already? Like you haven't yeah. even said anything. I didn't even talk yet. I didn't even fucking say a word. Oh, he got, oh, bud, they got you the black heart. Oh, by the way, since the, the chat is, is gone, uh, you can see this, this little link right here. I have that says, uh, restream uh chat.restream.io slash facebook if you go there we'll be able to see who you are instead of just saying facebook user in our chat or whatever go do that if you want to interact with us if you want to talk it's cool to talk shit all right we love talking shit but if you're going to talk shit to kev especially mm -hmm. you're going to have to reveal who you are you can't just be an anonymous shit talker all right it's just not that's not cool uh but this is kev i'm gonna i'm gonna read you uh kev's uh bio that that uh we used ai to write <laughs> 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 no, uh, yes. no we didn't i'm joking uh kev grew up in saskatoon he, he spent winters trapping and skating played for the manitoba moose would have made the show except for his trick knee modeled a bit here and there i don't know if you can tell that it was a grind people were intimidated by his handsomeness which is partly why he's on the show but he ended up selling old cds mainly out of his trunk to get beer money and pay rent but he landed on his feet right he's, yeah. he's here he's, he's with us he always loved hockey no opportunity to play as a kid I started roller uh, in college, picked up ice in his early 20s. He uh, was working as a graphic artist uh, and got an internship with the Blackhawks in the media department. And from there, he became uh, a marketing manager at one of the rinks in Chicago. Uh, and then the GM of that place left. And so he took over as uh, the GM. Um, and so he did that for, what, 11 years, Kev? Uh, yep. Just dealing with dealing with all the <laughs> hockey nonsense, which is part of the reason why I was so interested in having you on the show because you you can show us the uh, the background of of or the the uh, other side of a lot of the stuff. But now he lives in Colorado. Oh, yeah. Life's much slower in Colorado than it was in Ch in Chicago. Probably a little bit more awesome. He does uh, he manages and does graphic art for a promo marketing company, and he has his own side business as a writer. He started podcasting in 2019. He hosts and produced a comedy podcast called uh, History Defeats Itself. He's married, has a two-year-old kid. He drinks too much, smokes more weed than he should, and he ate too much spaghetti at his parents tonight. And he's, well, it says currently pooping, but I don't, that's. Well, in all fairness, I did send it yesterday to you. 
Yeah, that's true. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, Are you still so, pooping? Yeah, I, question. No, I'm yeah. not pooping right now. I am not okay. pooping right now. Yeah. Hey, can, yeah. can you imagine? Brian Bentz has just commented on our thing that this is the best in flight entertainment he can find. He's currently on a plane cross cross country in first class seats. Can you imagine? Like the the internet must be spectacular that he can watch us on an airplane. Absolutely. Insane. And he's in first class. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He's in, yeah. Well, he's, we, we really have high class people, right? We're not, yeah. we're not third liners here. We're first liners. All right. I feel like we, we need to do the Wade Boggs situation from it's always sunny. Yeah. Like t-shirt. <laughs> all right. Let's see how many beers you can drink during this flight and keep us posted as you go. Yeah. So this is this Kevin, Kevin, thank you for joining us. Yeah. Thanks thank for having you. me. Excited hey, to be no here. Problem, man. Hey, and like I said, I, I really am interested in, in, um, I mean, obviously I've been on the other side of like league hockey and tournaments and that kind of stuff, but it's not an insight that a lot of our listeners get to see. Uh, and so it, it'll be good to hear those experience. I'm sure you've dealt with plenty of hockey parents, plenty of hockey coaches, adult hockey players. You, you've ran the gamut because you were the GM of a, of a fairly big, big hockey uh, yep. facility. And so it'll be interesting as we, as we uh, progress in our relationship with each other and with the listeners, uh, how uh, the, the stories you're going to regale us with. And all I'm saying yeah. is don't hold back. All right. Okay. Okay. Don't, just tell us, give us, give us the gritty. We want to hear the, the gritty, uh, the, the gory details. And that's what we're all about. I so. can't do the gritty. I cannot do the gritty. Oh, you can try. Okay. Yeah. At least the for reasons th- that made you drink at night. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, all of it. All right. Before we get going too far, I want to tell you where you can find us on social media. Uh, unless you've been living on a rock, you know what the beer league players association is. We're just a group of beer leaguers that go out and we do cool shit together. We try to make the world a better place uh, just by playing sports together. And I think we're accomplishing that mission as we move forward. We're just going to get better and better and better. I'm going to tell you about a, a buddy named Aaron Hodge. Maybe you've ran into Aaron Hodge from Chicago. He got jumped one night after leaving work at a bar, got beat up pretty bad, had to go to the hospital and it, uh, hospital bills in the state suck and they're expensive. Uh, they can make you go broke. Uh, but we're raising money right now for Aaron's hospital bills. If you want to donate to that, you can just hit us up on the BLPA. It's $5. Every $5, you're buying a beer for Aaron. We're going to give all that money to Aaron. And everyone that gives $5, uh, each $5 you give, you get an entry to win a free Dex. So we're going to let it run for a week and see how much. I think we're up to close to $200 right now. So if you uh, if you want to give back to the community, that's what we're all about. Uh, and you want to play in a Dex, then, you know, for free, then you can uh, go donate and try to win one. But you can find us at every single social media outlet in the world, mostly. I don't think we're on any Russian ones right now because Russians, we're, you know, we're not friendly with them. Um, uh, BLPA, not Russians in general, just the, yeah. the country Russia. Yeah. We're friends with you. We don't now. like Russians on this show. Like- I, you know, I, I like Russians. I don't like the aggressiveness in political warfare. Ah, right? okay. So that's right. that's basically. I was following your lead. I thought we were a Russian hating show. I, I listen. <laughs> I, listen. I don't give. I don't give uh, two shits about most politics. I just know, you know, throwing throwing missiles at people outside of the rink, not oh. the coolest. Yeah, that's what. That's genuinely, what uh, generally but, frowned upon. Yeah, people. If I'm tossing really missiles like at it. goalies, cool. But if you're tossing missiles at buildings, not not cool. Um, but you can find us on the BLPA and this show is brought to you by hockeywolf.com. Ow, 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 ow. Ow. Hockeywolf.com. Beer leaguers just like you and me. We're just trying to make the game a little bit more affordable for all of you guys. They got hockey gloves. They got BLPA stuff that we don't even have. Uh, they got team, team apparel. They got uniform. They got everything. And my man Trav over at Hockey Wolf, like they're just, like I said, they're just trying to help us. He's a beer leaguer himself. He supports the shit out of the BLPA. He supports this show. So if you get a chance and you need some gear or you need some, some team setups, maybe you need a custom tracksuit. I don't know. Go check them out. Hockeywolf.com. Ow, 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 ow. Hey, hey, can we get, can we get custom tracksuits for the hosts? Yeah, I think, I think we need them. And, and I think that, that we demand them now, yeah. uh, to be honest with you, Trav, if you're listening, you know, work us up something. Yeah. Uh, you can find all of our merch too. I'm getting chirped in the in the comments already by by my oh, friends. I'm obsessed with these comments. I'm so glad like, I don't do this on my other show. It, it, it's so hard. Like, listen, then it'll get going, uh, and they'll start chirping you for no fucking reason. Oh, yeah. And, no, and then, you, then you're like, "Hey, uh, we're podcasting here. All right, we're trying to inform the masses of what's going on in the beer league scene." But we like that they're that they when they start arguing with each other, and then I'm just caught in the drama. And, I, and you're like, uh, "What's the next topic?" I'm like, "I don't know. Let's talk about this guy." 
uh, bullshitting with this guy, right? But no, uh, you can find our merch at uh, beerleagueplayers.com. We're actually a focus, big focus in 2023 is our merch. We have a lot of really cool designs coming out. I, I would like to show you on here, but I don't want to ruin the surprise because I'm so fucking excited about them. Uh, and so look, even the comments, BLPA tracksuits, we need them. We need them. BLPA right? bikini tops and Speedos. That's a must. I don't know if you, listen, I don't know if you know this. Uh, I don't know if I should say this. Uh, I should have uh, Brooke come on and talk about it. But Brooke has got the girls at the Philly wanting to get uh, BLPA bikini tops with my face where the boobies go. Um, <laughs> and then also the bikini bottoms with my face right there with the, you know, uh, uh, face making, uh, you know, so I don't know. But I'll right, do well, right where, Nick? Right, right like where are you talking about? Nick? Right in the pubic region. <laughs> the pubic uh, region? <laughs> right, right, down, right down yonder. Right, we're going to talk about Jess's genitals later. Uh, later that's on, right, I'm, sure. I'm sure we yeah. do have a segment called Jess's General Genitals. We don't know if that's going to be the working title, but we said, "What should this title be?" And someone said, "Jess's General." It, it's we listen. We're, we're it was evolving. a Facebook General messenger General. thing. We're evolving. Okay, so here's what we're going to talk about today, just so everyone knows. We're about to give you some dex tells. Uh, we're going to talk. Uh, uh, Kevin's going to bring. He's a way bigger NHL guy than most of us. I think it's a substandard product myself, so I don't watch. It's bullshit. Um, but we're going to talk about a little NHL talk. Bobbing for Bedard is the new segment uh, that Kevin's bringing to the table. Uh, and then we're going to talk about uh, Jess's genitals. And then, <laughs> just funny to say. <laughs> and then we're going to do a, a fight line cut. That's alliteration, but, dude. Yeah, it is. It rolls off the tongue real nice. It's a good one. I've, I've written and recorded a song for all of you uh, to lead us into our next uh, topic. So sit, sit back. Be regaled by the beautiful sounds in your earballs of the commish. Life is one big hockey game here in Trattenburg. Cold beer, slap shots, body pain. It's a Dexter. Now that we're sober, let's talk it over. Dexter. Every tourney out there making Dexter. Tales of pucking their beer guzzling Dexter. No shot I made. I sure as fuck made it. I made that. Did I'm it kind of sound like he said dick's tails? Yeah. I see. I mean, thought that. Yeah. You got to pay well, the troll whatever. toll. Yeah. Listen, here's the deal. Here's the, I'm, not, I'm, not singing, I'm not singing lead, but I, I'm doing some background vocals right there. Just blending in, harmonizing. But we're going to talk about decks. If you've, ne if you've never heard about decks, draft experience, greatest hockey tournament known to mankind in the whole fucking universe. Time. It is a good time. And we do a shit ton of them. And you guys need to come play with us. Hopefully we're going to get Kev out there. You know, I, I haven't don't know played if... in many years, but uh, you can maybe bring me okay. out of retirement. Hey, that's that's the best part yeah. about uh, draft experience. It doesn't matter what skill level you are. Uh, we got players that just started to learn how to skate. We've got players that have played their whole lives and they come together for a weekend. Sure, winning is nice. I get it. Everyone loves winning, uh, but that's it's not the point of losing. the draft. Yeah, it is better than losing. Unless, unless you have the team that I had in Philadelphia, which was absolutely outstanding. We were 0 4 going into the championship game and nobody cared. We just, wow. we were just enjoying how each other's you, company. How did you make the championship game? Well, that's the best part about a draft experience. Every team makes a championship game. Well, well so this guy, game. these people hate the Blackhawks. I didn't realize that. Well, listen, uh, to be fair with you, I, I'm looking and I see a Columbus Blue Jacket fan. So, I mean, <laughs> yeah, I <laughs> know. One of the guys, is, and, you know, I don't even know who, who John. Andre, I think he's a Rangers family, lives in Alaska. So I, it's it's a weird, you know, maybe cheer for your hometown yeah. team. Yeah. Losers. Uh, but no. So other than <laughs> I'd be pissy Alaska. too if I lived in it. I'd be pissy too if I lived in an igloo. Okay. Hey, listen, Alaska is a great, time. Uh, hey, Alaska's a great place. We 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 did a dex there, and John basically owns the whole fucking state. He owns every business in the state except for that one pizza joint I couldn't get into, I was pissed about. But Alaska was a great time. And if you guys ever want to play hockey in Alaska, we're doing two tournaments there this year. You should come. Uh, you should come uh, play with us. But let's talk about decks. All right, Jess and I played in SoCal. We did. Then we had Philly. We got Savannah coming up, a brand new market. We've never been to Savannah before, and we we said let's let's do one. Savannah, and Georgia. Savannah, yeah. Cool. There's, there's, here's what happened. There's a new rink open in Jacksonville, and I called them and said, "Hey, listen, this is what we do. We want to do one." And he's like, "Yeah, exciting." But here's the deal our company just took over uh, the rink in Savannah. We're going to run it for them. They got the ice pirates there, uh, uh, a pro hockey Ghost team. Pirates. Ghost, Ghost pirates. pirates. Yeah. yeah. And, and he said, 
people want hockey there. So would you consider doing one there? And I said, I'll, I'll do one anywhere. And I love doing hockey in the South because I'm from Oklahoma. So it's not a traditional market. So to see hockey going in places where it traditionally hasn't gone is to me that, I mean, that's, that's what I love. That's at the bottom of it. That's what I love is, is putting hockey there. And, and so we, we set it up and damn thing sold out and we had to add two more teams. And then I went and looked at it and what we sold out at 56 players and 48 of them were first timers uh, for, wow. for our tournament, first time players Incredible. with us. And yeah. And so it's just basically, it's, it's basically insane. It's growing and we're going to go there. Uh, and then we got Lake Louise up here in the mountains, the first of March. And then the second weekend of March where we're at, oh yeah, we're in Omaha for our 50th tournament since 2020. Some 50th tournament. 50th might I say. You like those, yeah? The old yes. bush, the bush lattes? Yes. I'm Which all way? about the bush. <laughs> oh, sorry. We're not on my segment yet. I'll yeah, yeah. We're not on Jess's genitals yet. No. Uh, you but, can't talk about your genitals the entire show. Just yeah, the, I mean, listen, the one we gotta let we gotta let me and Kev talk about things, yeah, okay? about our genitals, you know. Okay. <laughs> well, well, Bush, yeah. Okay, Bush latte. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, and so then we're in we're in Boston, we're in Tampa, we're in uh, Boston on St. Patty's Day, and then we're in Austin, and then we're in Ann Arbor, and that ends ends through March, and then we have three straight BLPA Bash team tournaments. So we got a lot of shit going on, Jess. And what I want to know, Jess. I want to know about your SoCal experience because I wasn't in your locker room, but your locker room looked like a ton of fun. The time I walked in and the lights were flipping on like a strobe light. Oh, that wasn't my jamming. locker room. That was the that Kings wasn't? locker room. No, but I you were just joined. Oh, you were just in there jamming. Okay. Yeah. Well, I was coming out of the game and their lights are flicking on and off. And you, I don't, I don't know people's names. I'm terrible with names. You got the guy that's in the door that is like, yeah, let's have a good time. And they're like, got the goalie in the middle of the locker room. Like, yeah. And I'm like, you guys like accepting applications. Can I come on in? They're like, yeah, come on. So, so I was just in there because it was fun. Right. Like how are you going to turn down a dancing locker room? Yeah. Well, exactly. Life? And I listen, make it easy for right. them because they were winning all their games. I get it. Uh, but at the end of the day, they, they were a hoot. They were fun to play in and just, you know, what sucked about SoCal. It rained the it whole did. time. Well, like, I, bring, I, I bring the rain with me every time. I go out home to Arizona or California. I always bring the rain with me. Like ask any of my friends, ask my family. They're all like, oh, Jess must be in town because it's raining. So yeah, I bring it yeah. back with me from North Carolina. So you're welcome. I mean, the desert needs the rain, but also like, come on. Yeah. I mean, they, they, said, they, they said they were in a drought and that we, yeah. we cured it and here we go. So yeah, I mean, SoCal was a great time. I mean, obviously for me, it was nice because I got to go with, I got to take my family. And we mm -hmm. got to go to one, one day at Disneyland and we got to go to Legoland. And that's where the, the jerseys actually came from, originated from. Because when my kid was like, dad, why do you got to, why do you got to move your tournament from, you know, LA? And I said, well, this is why, bud. And he's like, go to San Diego. They have a Legoland and you can do Lego jerseys. And how do you say, how do you say no when a five-year-old says that? Right. And so, um, so we, we did it. He did it. He enjoyed it. And I, listen, my kid doesn't play hockey yet. Like he said he wants to, but he also says it's too cold to play. And he's really just into Lego, but I, I think he's a, a chip off the old block because he made another Jersey suggestion for Savannah and I, I'm going up. Oh, I don't know if I can, I, I would show it on here, but I'm not going to show it, but I'm going to tell you, he said, Hey dad, you're doing ghost. Why don't you do uh, zero Jack's dog from nightmare before Christmas? And I was like, that's a really good idea, bud. So, and we made it and the Jersey looks cute. awesome. Like, so he, I'm just gonna let him do my Jersey ideas from here on out. It seems like he's nailing them all the time. It's two for two. Yeah, it was yeah. a great it's idea. I love the combination. And also just going to Carlsbad, that was a really chill place. Like you weren't in the middle of the city of LA. Like we still had a lot of that hometown feel. Like there's a, that group of guys that came down from Riverside. I really liked that. Now I've only played in a couple of decks. My first one was here in Raleigh. So it was more of like the local North Carolina people. I got to meet a lot of those folks and then my second one was nashville which seemed to kind of bring people from all over the country and but the what i liked about the socal decks maybe it's because it was my first one like away from home but it was a lot of the locals and so the locals kind of brought that like camaraderie and that like we all know each other let's party and let's have a great time and so i just absolutely loved it i thought the location was really cool just really quaint and it was like um i like the fact that they brought dogs um because like that ring oh, has five them. of them yeah. yeah that, have have you read the Google dogs. reviews about I, dogs? At that I have ice not. Ring? No, I, I saw some, some, you know, I'm too busy to read Google reviews. All right. 
Uh, but I know there was some, there was a lot of chatter about it. And so, uh, what, what do they say about dogs that people, they don't like dogs there? Um, I, I believe there was a situation where somebody tried to bring their service dog in and they called it a world war two service dog. Like the dog was from world war two, which yeah, I'm sure the dog is still alive. Um, but I don't know exactly the situation, but it went like a thousand comments of people just kind of making up stuff to the story that they posted in on the Google reviews and they got to be pretty, we were reading them out loud at a Christmas at a family Christmas event like and, uh, my beau and I were just like crying, laughing and just what these people were saying. We're like, all right. And then when we got there to the rink, the best part, and I regret not like ripping one of these signs off the door, adding to it with Sharpies. They had like the sign that was like no animals allowed except for service dogs. And I'm like, how many people have come back and write except for World War II service dogs? But uh, those reviews, I'm not going to spoil it. If you just have some time to kill when you're dropping missiles south of your legs, go ahead and uh, find the, what was it called? Ice Town Carlsbad? Yeah, they, they got some. Good, and that's like we, uh, we also looked up the Philly draft experience uh, draft location and there was a really funny photo of like a very large woman stumbling out of there or something and so that was a that was a good one so uh humor comes from different places but uh socal was incredible the, it was. we went we were draft our draft was at a kombucha place and we're like are they really just gonna serve us fucking uh rancid tea at this place and they actually not had rancid food. fermented fermented Fer- yeah, <laughs> fermented and rancid the same goddamn thing uh but i'm super i'm super stoked for savannah i can't wait i've never been to savannah georgia it's one place that i i haven't yeah. been to that i've been wanting to go to and it's so awesome. to be able to, to is awesome. it is it you've been there yeah. super awesome. cool yeah my uh my wife's father lives there it's awesome okay awesome well i i know that you can like vegas you can just carry your your booze around in the certain can. In that, uh, in that certain area, there's like a sort of just, just one area of bars uh, that you can do that. Yeah. It's kind of right along the river, right? It's right along the river. Yep. Nice. Yeah. Jess, are you coming to Savannah? I'm not. I wanted Get to go. Out. We had a last minute tournament that we registered for in Brampton outside of Toronto. So Brampton, Ontario. Why well, do you want to go up there? I swear we're going to go play with our next Lady mm-hmm. Canes tournament. Okay. So. When's your next one? That weekend. The t- well, no, I know. When's it's your next When's your next oh, day? Oh, my next next. I don't have one yet. We were well, talking about doing um St. Patty's Day, right? Boston. That's in Boston. Hell yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Boston's it's a good a place time. to spend St. Patty's Day. Yeah. It's Speaking either of Boston- we fly to we fly to Phoenix and go to spring training for a few days out there, see my folks, or go to Dex and Boston over St. Patty's Day. Yeah, I would I would say Dex. And if we're gonna talk about Boston Dex, I just want to give a shout out to one of my favorite people. I saw her already in the chat. Uh Carolyn. Carolyn, how are you doing? Um Listen, all you got to do is block Kyle Thornton and you won't even see anything that he says. So uh, I hope I hope to see you in Boston, Carolyn. I, I'm pretty sure you're still living there. But she she also <laughs> it's actually like this. She just lives in Boston, but she she what I think she she, she's going to move back from Raleigh. Right. So that's I think she's from the Raleigh area originally. Okay. So she's a super, super duper Canes fan. Like like where's the jersey face paint, everything like she's super, super into it. Uh, well, Kyle didn't even know that that Carolyn was in in here. And, uh, so probably she already blocked him. So maybe she already made the best decision. I don't know. Um, but anyway, so that's it about Dex. Uh, if anyone has any questions about Dex, you can leave them in the comments and we'll answer those questions. Yeah. Do you have anything else you want to say about Dex, Jess? And that it's a good time. Yeah. How many of you guys do a year? I don't oh, know how to describe it. Almost 40, 40 for sure. 40. Yeah. That's a lot. That's a lot. <laughs> that's a lot of tournaments. Yeah, it's, it's, about- it's, it, it might be thirty three. It's it's between thirty and forty for sure. I'd say that the best part about the decks is the fact that Saturday doesn't matter at all. No, like, no, that's have- it's untrue. It's untrue. That's on a four team tournament. Like when you go to like Philly on an eight team tournament, you gotta you gotta win all your games to go to the A championship or the platinum championship. Okay, I misspoke my bad. Okay, so the four team ones are great because like you're trying to get that camaraderie with your team, but you also want to drink and you're also hungover from the night before. Or like the guys in California who didn't go to bed at all. Um, no. And so you can just kind of play however you want, figure each other out on sa- Saturday or like my team win all of our games just to, you know, set the standard for lo- for losing on Sunday. But it's a great time. You get to meet really cool people. I've, yeah, I've just met and met so many mutual friends of folks along the way. Yeah. Dex is where it's at. Yep. I love love them. And you're right. They didn't go to sleep and they did the same thing the last year, the goalie. Anyway, he's a, he's a fucking, uh, a certified butte. 
certified beauty shit show actually because he was bombed both Saturdays and then he comes out like he, he he doesn't do that great on Saturdays but on Sunday he just fucking rips it up it's insane uh, but yeah, I know Kevin I, I think I saw Kevin smile because we get a comment directly right at him yeah I, I what's up Sue been a long time yeah I knew oh, see Sue the, hi Sue in Chicago yeah we all know who doesn't know Sue everybody I've knows met her because of the decks yeah, yeah. Sue's, yeah. Sue's, uh, Sue's, uh, Sue's a legend I just I just want to I want to point this out Sue is married to Bill. Yep. And so uh, Sue might be listening to this in bed right now. And we didn't give uh, we didn't give Bill like they Bill's like, listen, I don't mind if she listens to you in bed, but, you know, tell her to tell her to give it up sometime, you know. And so I'm like, Bill, listen, I'll get on this podcast and we'll do sultry sounds of beer league and we'll talk sexy. So I'm sorry I didn't I didn't see Sue here, so I couldn't talk sexy. But next time we'll have a we'll have a a Bill sexy segment. So when Sue's listening to this with Bill, uh, you got we'll get him get her in the mood. And you guys can play a little beer league in bed, you know. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna get her in the mood. <laughs> no, we're gonna get Bill in the mood. <laughs> okay, okay. No, either no. Way. Get, either way, get, I, I, yeah, we're gonna get Sue in the skeptical mood. Skeptical of this. We're gonna get Sue in the mood so she can listen to BLPA in bed. Okay. You know, wh- whatever, right. whatever people do in bed, I I don't know, right? Um, okay. Oh, Amazing. she's not. She's not watching in bed this time. She this, she takes she, and she'll like she'll like this because Sue the, the plan like we're trying to take this more serious as a podcasting as a as a business so we can expand it. So we're gonna have the live show. It's gonna last forty five minutes or so, and then we're gonna have interviews after. Uh, so that way you can download, you can listen to them live, uh, but then you can also download to hear the extra stuff. So best of both worlds for you. All right. Mm-hmm. So um, and, and speaking of John Andre's in here in here with us, uh, he's always in the mood. So. Uh, Oh boy, Jake's in here talking about Tommy Tantrum already. Whew. Turn it up. Be a beauty. Subscribe. Ring. This is and review. Let's get it. Let's not hey, let's not burn the <laughs> let's not let's not let's not burn burn the barn down first, but it was great. You would have loved this in Philly. Uh we were just talking about Brad and he was on the ice and we got everyone to every time he got on the ice, we started booing. Every time he touched <laughs> the puck, we started booing and then every time he lost the puck or got off the ice, we cheered. <laughs> and we were trying, we were trying, we were trying to get the refs to give him a penalty just because, because the roof would have blown off the fucking arena if that would have happened, but they didn't we, then we all left and then he got a penalty. So, uh, so speaking of Tommy tantrum, shout out to him too. If that's what you're calling him, I, you know, but anyway, all right, on to the next segment here. Uh, well, I'm going to let, I'm going to let, uh, Kev introduce this next segment. Take it away, Kev. No, well, before I do, I'm curious about, a, uh, something you said earlier, Nick, where you, you basically said that the NHL is subpar. Yes. I believe is what you said. Substandard. And it, substandards to, yes. to what, what is, what is better than, than to the, what than I think, that. what I think a, pro, a professional sports league uh, should be. Okay. You know, okay. there's a lot of, a lot of things they could do better. I mean, sure. they have the worst officiating in any professional sports. And the one thing that they could do, the one simple thing that they could do is they can make referees available for uh post game press, just like they do the coaches, just like they do the players. Cause I, I'm not saying the referee should be perfect. I don't, I don't, I, no one's perfect. I mean, the players aren't perfect. Uh, the coaches aren't perfect. Referees aren't perfect, but I think they should be accountable for, you know, some of the bullshit calls that are made on the ice. I get hockey's a, a fast game. I get that there's going to be mistakes, but just come out and say, Hey, this is what I saw. This is why I made the call. And then say, you know, I went back and look, I fucked it up. Cool. I, I would be on board with that, but there's so many, so many horrific calls that cost teams points and games and losing points in games leads to, you know, maybe not making the playoffs or a different seed or, or whatever. And I just think that they could do uh, so many more things, uh, you know, around the game to make it uh, a more, pro- I guess, professional, they are a professional organization. They, they can make it better for, for the fans in terms of understanding. I mean, goalie, what's goalie interference? How come we can't get anything that resembles consistency on goalie interference? How come we can't get, I, I don't any, disagree with that, but is that the refs or is that the league? But that's everything. But, but, I said substandard product. So there's a lot of things that go into making it a substandard product. And that would yeah. be referees is my one concern. Right. And I'm not saying that I'm not saying fuck the referees. We need referees. We got a shortage of referees. I get it. And I understand opening them up to uh, media criticism is one thing, but these guys get paid a lot of fucking money. Like, they get paid more than I do. They get paid more than most people. They get six figures to be in the NHL. They're supposed to be at the top of their profession. So you got to be able to take some criticism, right? You shouldn't be, right. you shouldn't, you shouldn't get to find coaches just because a coach comes out and says the referee was shitty when the referee was in fact shitty. I mean, right. it's, it's just the way it is. And when I'm bad at my job, uh, th- there, there's accountability to it. You have to have a press conference and say that you were shitty. No, no. But no, I, but if, if I, no. if I was in, if I was in a, a job with, uh, with a boss, I would have to go into my boss and explain what the fuck happened. 
And so all I'm saying is there needs to be some accountability. And to be fair, I get their bosses, the NHL, but the boss too is their fans, right? Like the fans pay a lot of money uh, to root for their team, whether it's gear tickets, they go and spend $15 a beer at their games to pay the salaries. Like there just needs to be some accountability, not so we can rag on the officials. Cause that's going to happen no matter what I get it. But just so there, there are some fans like myself that want to understand, like, wh- why did they make that call? Like, what are you a what, fan of? Every are you a fan of any professional sport? Uh, yeah, I'm. A, I'm a fan of hockey. I just think it's some better product. I think it could be better. That's I mean, is there I'm a better? Passionate. Is there a better product like that in a in a different sport? Uh, in that, that's good. I don't pay attention to as many. I mean, I watch baseball and I watch uh, I watch football, uh, and and they all have their own problems. And I still okay. I think across the board, I think officiating should be should be called into question, right? I think there are there are things that we want to understand why instead of just like, okay, that happened, move on. It, you know, there needs to be some closure somewhere. Like that in you know, 2004. You're a, typical, you're a typical beer league player. Always no, listen, in 2004, that fucking I heard this shit the all the fucking time. All I, listen, fucking I run time. a beer league. I hear it too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and there's no such thing as perfect ref, but you're right. We're all human. We're all going to make mistakes. Yeah, and so yeah. come talk to us professional athlete. Like we're not professional athlete. Beer league isn't a professional sport. No, but I, I mean, I'm, but I'm here's the thing that. too. Like when you can't say, I don't want to go off on too much of a tangent, even though that ship is probably fucking sailed. But I, I don't think that, that you can say one call makes someone lose two points because there are plenty of opportunities to win a game. But, but it's a I'm six not minute game. Call. It's not, it's not call. like there's what, like one call goes, Oh no, we're done. We're done because of that one call. It's just okay. Like but what, that. what about, what about the call in the playoffs? Who was it? Uh, the sharks and uh, was it the golden Knights where the sharks were up uh, three goals and there was a shitty call in the face off that led the momentum that gave him three goals. Sure. That one call led to that momentum. And I, I get- don't, I don't disagree. Yeah. I'm just saying they, you know, sure. You can't, I don't know. I think that, that with, with referees, you're always going to have issues with referees, with umpires, 100. with whatever. And, it's never going to be perfect. Just some a lot of times, a lot of times you kind of, yeah. it's kind of amazing. I'm always like amazed at how, how much do you see? Yeah. You know, well, like I mean, about that's, why, and- that's why you, I mean, wh- how much they do see, because that's the, the, that's why I want the refs to be able to answer. Tell me, tell me what you saw. Tell me what, what, why you made that call. It, whether you're right, you're not going to change the call. I get it. Mm-hmm. But as a fan that pays and, and is invested into the game, let, let me know why. Like even, is, look, someone just said ref should get fined if a coach's challenge is correct. I, I don't. That's going far. I understand the sentiment, right? Yeah. Because if, if the if the coach's challenge, and they're and they're wrong, they get penalized. The, the team the other team gets a power play. It, it's you know, but there's no account. If a ref's wrong, he's just wrong. Fuck it. He, coaches he made a have it's the oh, replay though. The refs don't have that liberty. Yeah, I understand that. And they, they do. Sometimes they still, yeah. even in the world juniors, there was the call where they, they reviewed it for 18 minutes and I feel they still got it wrong. But at the end of the day, 18 yes, minutes. Yeah. It was oh a long God. ass review. Yeah. It was, it was crazy. That's stupid. Uh, I mean, but they were also, yeah. they were also giving out penalties for wearing your mouth guard wrong. So that, that's a whole nother yeah. subject of, of that. But at the end of the day, I, I'm not saying that refs need to be better or refs are pieces of shit. Uh, I mean, they're not goalies. Um, so just <laughs> uh, we lost Sue. We lost Sue. <laughs> um, so all I'm, all I'm like saying it. is, I just want a little bit of accountability because it, you know, if if a, if a ref doesn't have have any 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 negative impact for their what they do, I mean, these things things have consequences in life. That's just the the way of the world. Like you do something wrong, there's a consequence. And so all I'm saying is, I want the ref to be able to come up and say, okay, I, I made that. Go-. Maybe a ref has something against a player. Who knows? Right? I know players do. I've, I've talked to players and, mm-hmm. you know, I can't say what players I've talked to, but I, I've just, we saw it on TV and I was watching, I was eating with them uh, breakfast one morning uh, at a practice facility. And I just said, Hey, let me just ask you this question off the record. I'm not going to, I'm not going to give names or anything, but like, do you think this guy's a piece of shit because of the shit he does? And he's like, yeah, everyone thinks he's a piece of shit on this team. Right. And so they like players have stuff. So refs are human too. So they well, have didn't that one ref, didn't a ref get did booted or get fired because he said he got caught on a hot mic saying like, I think it was uh, Nashville, and he was, and he got caught saying, "Yeah, I wanted to give them a penalty early so that they calm the yeah. fuck down or something like that." Yeah, I mean, yeah. Like, and, but and we the, all know that shit happens. It happens. That's just and, how the, that's how that's how hockey's been forever. One hundred percent. But look, even in like <clears throat> in, in the major leagues, in the in the AAA, they're bringing in uh, robotic umpires for the strike zone to get, to get it right. And I'm not saying that we need to go with robotic. I mean, if we wanted to go real fucking wild west, what we would do is we would just <laughs> we would let everyone vote on penalties. Uh, 
by phone in the stands. Like, who do you think this is a penalty or not? One, uh, dial one if you think it's a penalty. <laughs> and then it just becomes crazy. But I know no. the home team. That, that's no, but I'm saying, just like, no. We don't. We don't need. We don't need. <laughs> Sounds like an idea for a bash. Let's yeah, vote on. Uh, the fans we, get a vote on penalties. For the other we don't. Team. We don't need a robot. Would you, would, you, would you want the? Would you want the computer? The robot strike zone in baseball. Would I? No, I because the human element is still part of the game in every game. I'm, that's what I'm not saying. I'm not saying what that. What the fuck are we talking about? I'm saying that you you still have to get better. You still have to strive to be better. There's stuff to be. You have to improve on what you're doing. You can't just say, "Yeah, the ref blew that call. We know it. He knows it. We all know." It, but what? Who the fuck cares? With no, all I'm saying is I just want people to say, "Hey, listen, I'm a ref. Here's the call I made. This is what I saw." And, and you, want, be done with you just it. want them to admit it. You just want them to admit yeah. that they fucked maybe up. But also, the NHL maybe to actually like take action against refs who are showing bias repeatedly. It's obvious, and they just yeah. kind of keep them in the league. And I'm sure there's plenty of guys out there who would love to be refs in the NHL, but they kind of keep the same ones around for year after year after year. Oh, and then playing. when those games come on, you're like, um, I'm not. I'm just terrible with names. I'm, it's probably some French name that I'm thinking of. This one guy that just hates it for the Canes, but it's like. Why bring him out here? Because he's just going to blow the game. And also, you're just going to piss off all the fans. And it's just not going to be a fun environment. Like, why not take him out of the league? Yeah. I, and it's not even taken out. Like, I'm not trying to get people removed. There's only one referee like, that I think should not out? be referee. Yeah. I mean, there's only Obviously. one referee that I think should not be in, involved in refereeing. And it was a dude at Fifth Thirds Arena in Chicago, as a matter of fact. And we had a little yelling match. And he was a real butt baby. I don't know if you know what a butt baby is. But it's basically like this. I said, listen, bud. You're a real, were you born out of your mom's butt? You piece of shit, you butt baby. And that's basically where it is. And he was a piece of shit. But other than that, uh, mm-hmm. and I agree with all, like, listen, uh, for some reason, uh, you know, youth parents would feel entitled to make refs answer to them too. I get, I understand the flip side, but I'm still saying, I'm not saying in beer league, I'm not saying in youth hockey, I'm not saying, in, I'm saying in the NHL, the highest level of professional hockey there is, the refs that are at that level should have some accountability whether, you know, to, to the media is what I'm saying, which might not be the best, but it's what I think uh, would make a lot of fans feel better. But I also understand that in the, in the real world, it doesn't matter even if people know the truth, they're going to believe what they want to believe because we're in a, a time and, and place where if someone writes something on Twitter, if they agree with you, uh, you know, if it sounds like something, you, you know, it, that's uh, along your line of thinking that you're going to think that that's, you know, set in stone like it's the word of God just because it was said on Twitter. So I, I, I understand the ramifications. I'm just saying that in my mind, that would, that would make the game that much more uh, better, less, less substandard. And definitely okay. very interesting to hear their perspective. I agree with that one. And, and we're going to talk about, yeah. yeah. And we're going to talk about something else that I think would make the game better uh, with this. this oh God. Yeah. Mindset. We should probably, we should probably keep going because we still need to do some other stuff, including talk about just his feelings on genitals and all that. But Oh, I thought um, we were just talking yeah. about her genitals. Oh, we're talking about, oh, maybe I just oh, understood the genitals. segment. I don't, I don't know. We'll figure all right, it out. All right. So we're going to talk about bombing for Bedard. For people who don't know, Connor Bedard is pretty much the consensus number one pick in the draft coming up this year. Probably more, I probably haven't heard this much buzz about a player since, since McDavid, to be honest with you, uh, when he was coming out. But my beloved Blackhawks are in last place right now. And uh, they're leading the charge in the bombing for Bedard. They're currently in last with 26 points. They are fully committed to sucking. They sent their top prospect, Lucas Reichel, down despite playing well in a few games. Uh, they're last in the league with 94 goals scored on the year. It is also mid-January, only 94 goals. Let that sink in. Uh, there's a good chance they trade uh, Athanasiu and Domi, two of their better players at the trade deadline. And, of course, there's rumors about them sending away Kane and Taves as well. They gave up eight goals to the Kraken over the weekend, and they're pretty much unwatchable. So they're currently in number one. You know, there's a lottery, as we're going to talk about in a little bit, but they are uh, in a uh, great position to have the most uh, ping pong balls in the lottery. Second goes to the Anaheim Ducks. Uh, they uh, have 28 points. Uh, they're last in the league in goal differential at minus 81. That is, uh, that's pretty pathetic. Uh, they are last in goals allowed, obviously, with uh, 181. They're three, six, and one in their last 10. They're on a three-game slide, and uh, they're going to be selling off some people as well. Uh, the Columbus Blue Jackets, I believe we may have some fans of them who might have been trash-talking me, which is very ironic. They also have 28 points, uh, one more than the Ducks, uh, or they have one more win than the Ducks, so that they're technically just above them. Minus 58 goal differential, three and seven in their last 10. 
Uh, even Johnny Goudreau and Patrick Liney can't make that. Uh, Fuck that, Johnny that Goudreau. Work. Oh, that's right. That's <laughs> right. Oh, that's... Really listen, Mister. I came here to win hockey games. How many are you winning? Everybody. I mean, let's be honest. We, we don't need to get into this, but really, dude, you fucking you fucking chose Columbus. Okay, whatever. Um, hey, hey, listen, I want to be fair. Uh, Columbus is my favorite city in the U.S. They support the shit out of BLPA. I, I can understand that Johnny probably listened to our podcast and heard me talking about Columbus. That's probably, probably. why he went. Yeah. But you kind of left the flames high and dry, and you said you were going to win hockey games, and you're not really winning hockey games. So what are you you're really not. there for? Okay. Right. It's just insulting at this point. Yeah, it is insulting. I, I will say this though. I mean, you put Bedard with uh with uh, Gaudreau or Line A, and and uh, you know maybe they can make some noise. Who knows? We'll see. Uh, anyway, we'll keep an eye on it. I was just going to do the top three, but I wanted to give an honorable mention to the Arizona Coyotes, who is on a current nine-game losing streak, uh, which is very impressive. They are very, working very hard uh, to get into the Bedard sweepstakes. Yeah, um, we're usually really good at this. This uh, is yes, our game. they are the solid, solid. Um, <laughs> I. Uh, you know, let's hope that doesn't happen. I mean, I, I, no offense to the Coyote fans out there, both of them, but, but yeah, Bedard, to, uh, Bedard, Bedard, Bedard to Arizona is not appealing. It's no not Bedard appealing. to Arizona with, uh, with fucking Austin Matthews leaving the, the Maple Leafs. That would be a deadly combo to get that new facility. And listen, and here, here's my beef with this whole lottery thing. I'm just going to jump right in. You're going to jump right in. All right, let's fucking go. I'm gonna say, I wanted to say is, one thing really quick. Cause I thought this was crazy. Okay, the, all four of those teams that I mentioned, are plus 50,000 to win the Stanley Cup. So if you're a gambler, those are good odds. I mean, you can you can make some money. Yeah, let's, let's I don't think I've genius. ever seen plus All right, 50, I'm going to be in Vegas before. in 2 weeks here. I'll go hey, to the table. I'm going to I'm going to be in Vegas tomorrow. I'm going to put I'm going to put $5 on every single one of those. But listen, do you want to find my Here's hockey another... sticks while you're there tomorrow? That'd be good. Yes. Everybody but get ready. Did, we got another Nick rant coming up. Did, hey, did you did you hear about the guy this isn't part of the rant. The, the guy that oh. bet like 1.5 million for uh uh, oh, who was the team that was that was down twenty seven? It was uh, oh god, Jacksonville Jaguars. They came back and won, oh. by, but he but he put up, uh, and I think it was the Chargers, right? They, they put up uh, one point five million dollars for the Chargers to close that game out to win eleven thousand, and then he did not uh, win that bet because the he put the up one point five million to win eleven grand. Yeah, exactly, because they were up to, they were up like twenty seven zero at half. So he no, put I one, saw the game, but you, why yeah. would fuck with? What do you well, need eleven thought, grand thought, for at that money. point? He thought easy money, eleven thousand. That's the thing. People that have money just want more money. That's true. right. One point five million, and then he lost it. It's just, it's a thing. But let me talk about uh, <laughs> another thing terrible. that leads to uh, NHL being a substandard product, and it's these people that are actively tanking to get players like Bedard. Mm -hmm. And let me start. I'm a Calgary Flames fan. Everyone knows that. I, I'm a big Flames guy, and uh, my hatred for this system started with the Edmonton Oilers. I thought it was bullshit what they did. I thought they made a mockery of the sport. And I, I think it's shitty that they got to have four number one uh, draft picks in six years with the, the last one being Connor McDavid, who, listen, I'm a Flames fan. I hate the Oilers. McDavid is a, incredible. I, I watched Bedard I, uh, and I watched McDavid. I don't think Bedard will be as good as McDavid because McDavid just has something in his skating mm -hmm. that is just absolutely asinine. Yeah. But, I, but I think it's bullshit that the, the Oilers got him and they acted, it wasn't even like a, <laughs> it wasn't even like, oh yeah, we're going to try. No, it was every single year that they were getting number one overall picks. They were fucking actively tanking for it. Like what, how does that make a good league? Maybe we should have relegation. Maybe the Oilers should have been in the AHL. I don't know, but what I did is you start talking about bombing for Bedard, and then before I went you, to look. You, how do you know that they were actively tanking? I was just curious. Well, I'm just curious. I mean, I mean listen, I, mean, I, you I know, guess like, tanking like the Coyotes do naturally, and then yeah, yeah. I, I listen I'm, uh, from a fan's perspective, hearing their fan base like they didn't care about winning games; they just wanted they wanted to win the number one overall pick. It almost seemed like well, fuck the Stanley Cup. Let's just see if we can get another number one, and, may, and maybe that's a, a lot of jaded fans getting that. But it just, I mean, I they weren't icing a product that was that that was. Any competitive. I mean, how, how do you get, I mean, look, even, even the Chicago Blackhawks, like they got Kane uh, and they got Taze and then they were instantly competitive. Uh, mm -hmm. The Penguins, they got, they, uh, didn't, they didn't tank to get them though. They were just shitty. Yeah. Well, they were just got, very, very shitty. You got Sid Crosby, you got uh flower and there was uh, Evgeny Malkin. And then they were, they were, they, they were fucking competitive. Evan Joyner's got all these fucking number one overall picks. And one, they still, missed on them. They Jack still haven't Hawk. won a cup since all that, though. No, they still haven't won a cup uh, uh, since then, but their fans will tell you, well, remember the 80s. But, um, yeah. so I, I went and pulled and I yesterday. said, I, I want to look, there's only a few teams that have never gotten a number one overall pick. So what I think the, NH the NHL should do uh, for the fans of these, these teams that haven't taken the shit road is they should give them the same chance 
in, in, in a, a, fr- a franchise player like Bedard this year. And they should say, okay, these guys get whatever it is, 10% chance to, to get him or whatever. Well, it wouldn't be 10% because I think there's more than 10 teams. But there's only, like, let's see, there's the Anaheim Ducks have never had a number one. So it's good that they're up there. Uh, the Calgary Flames never had a number one overall pick. Ah, what? Now we know why this is a, a Carolina Hurricanes. We want to adopt. Carolina Hurricanes never had a number one overall pick. Minnesota Wild never had a number one overall pick. Nashville Predators, San Jose Sharks, Seattle Kraken, Vancouver Canucks, and the Vegas Golden Knights. And we understand I the mean, Golden Vegas, Knights. Vegas, Seattle, even even Carolina and and Minnesota. I mean, they're a little bit on the newer side as far as NHL goes. For sure, but but I'm just saying they've ne- yeah. they've never had a number. Those are the ones that have never had a, a number one overall pick. And then I, I went through and I was like, okay, well, let's see how many people, how many number ones have each team had. And do you know who the number one team with the most number one overall picks is? Is it not Edmonton? No. Oilers? Nope. The Montreal Canadiens. They've had six, six number one overall picks, and they also have the most Stanley Cups out of those. So to me, when okay. I start looking at- There's a correlation uh, there. Yeah, there's a correlation. Well, they've somewhere. also had a team since like 1840. Yeah, sure. So, I mean, they've been around a long time. Uh, Buffalo Sabres, true. the next the next most, uh, they're tied. There's actually three tied with uh, with four. That's the Sabres, the Oilers, and the Islanders. The Sabres never had a, a Stanley Cup, but I, Buffalo isn't really a town that wants to win games. They just want to be good and, and then lose so they can keep that moniker, I think. That's just I don't, you mean the whole town or just in hockey? Just, just the sports. Just the sports. They just, I don't they know just, that you would act if you'd really want to lose four Super Bowls in a row. I, I, I don't just know. don't think anybody's <laughs> trying for that. Yeah, but but are, are they not? Because now, look at them. now that's what they're known for. Now, now how do you break it? It's like when the Cubs. The Cubs couldn't win a, a, a World Series, and then they won one, and now no one really talks about the Cubs anymore. Was, yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, so, so you got Evan Oilers. They've won five. All in the 80s, I'm sure. Uh, New York Islanders, four. Uh, and and so that's telling me the people with the most number one overall picks are winning the most Stanley Cups. I mean, that's uh, – and obviously it's a little bit skewed. I'm, I'm using these statistics like uh, CNN and Fox News does just to prove their point, which there's probably not much of a correlation, but I'm still going with it. Boston Bruins. Three number one overall picks. Well, okay, okay, but isn't the lottery supposed to keep people from tanking? Because if there's one player everybody wants, it doesn't guarantee. Just because you're the worst team, it does not guarantee that you're going to get the first pick. But you're going to get a one, two, three. I mean, you're going to get a one, two, three. But when a guy like McDavid's out there, that doesn't necessarily it doesn't necessarily mean. Yes, yeah, sure, you have more ping pong balls or whatever, so you have a higher percentage chance. But sure. It doesn't mean you're going to get him. All I'm saying is is give these teams that have never had a number one overall pick and not a chance to get a Why? franchise player. What do you mean? Why? Because obviously there's a correlation to how many number one overall picks. You obviously, get. you and just said that it was probably not really not, actually a correlation. Yeah, but I, I'm I'm trying to prove my point here. <laughs> okay, is that gotcha. I, I, I'm looking at the teams that have never that have never had a number one overall pick and won a Stanley Cup. There's four of them: Anaheim Ducks, Calgary Flames, Carolina Hurricanes, and the Minnesota Wild. Okay. Okay. They've won one. All of them have won one. Right. Mm-hmm. So there is a correlation to say. The more times you've had a number one overall Wait, pick. the Minnesota Wild? Times. It says one. They didn't win a cup. It's, it says one on the thing. Did they? Comment people. As, as the North Stars, though. So oh, I guess well, you're no, getting that's that. The Dallas Dallas Stars, Stars, that's the Dallas Stars, though. That's the Dallas Stars. Yeah. Okay, perfect. But all I'm saying is that I think. God damn shows, it, Nick. Because, hey, look, look at me as a fan, as a Calgary Flames fan, a poor, lowly Calgary. There are two, two 110 point players left them for basically. I mean, we did trade Matthew Kachuk, but. Uh, they just left them. Like, what? What do we really have to cheer for? We 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 always finish. Uh, we always try real hard. Sometimes we make the playoffs. <laughs> Sometimes we make the playoffs. And we get, Everybody we get gets a first round draft, the first overall draft pick. Yeah, this is twenty twenty three. I like this. Everyone wants a fucking medal, right? It's twenty twenty three. Like, we're, I'm just trying to appeal to the masses here. But all I'm saying is that I think they should give every team that has never won. I mean, if you're gonna give Ed, Edmonton four in six years. Because for me, it seems like the NHL, they're going to say it's, oh, this is all game of chance. Uh, but it sure seems like the teams you think that they doctored the balls on that one. Do I think they doctored the balls? Yeah. yeah, I think they doctored the balls. And that's why I think the Coyotes are going to win Bedard. No, no, no. If the NHL doesn't, yeah, no, we if, the NHL wants, if the NHL wants like good, you know, to promote the sport of hockey, the last thing they would want to do is. Mm-hmm. Is is let the someone like that? Are you are you an Arizona Coyotes fan, Jess? Oh, born and raised. I live in Carolina now. I've been here for about seven years. But yeah, Coyotes are my number one. Ah, okay. Well, sorry for me. That's why I've got a good soul because we're just the we just expect to lose. So when we win, it's a great time. Yeah. But they, the NHL, 
They yeah. always get the bottom. They finish so poorly and they get these great picks, but they just trade them away. Like well, cool what, about, what about Calgary though? Like, I mean, if you, you know, you have to hang on to your players and if you can't, if you can't keep people there, why is that? Why should then they be rewarded by the first overall pick just because people don't want to stay with them? Well, you, you can't keep people there. I mean, what, I, I mean, I, I get it. It's Calgary in the winter. Matthew Kachuk goes to Florida where he's driving around in a fucking golf cart and flip flops. Like how, how do you, how do you compete with that as a city? How, how, it's okay. So now you're saying maybe the rules should be changed uh, on free agency and, and RFA and, and all that stuff. Because it, it, I mean, if I, if I'm an, NH, if I'm an NHL caliber talent and I have the choice to go to Calgary flames or uh, LA, New York or Florida, I'm not choosing Calgary. <laughs> what if they're the best team at the time? What if they have the best chance of win? Does it just depend on who uh, the kind of person? Well, do, do, we, do, do you think that Johnny see? Goudreau left because he didn't like the weather? Yeah, I think Johnny Goudreau left because he wanted to be closer to 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 a home. Like it, mm-hmm. he lives, he's from the Northeast, and that's where he went back to. And it, I think it's that was proven that he he wanted a place. He was back, about to have his first kid. Okay, and but it's so not because of the him. weather. He made a family decision, but well, I think that there's a lot to play into it. But if you if you're an NHL guy, you go you go into Winnipeg or you go into LA. Yeah, also just like Winnipeg. Winnipeg. Absolutely, What's wrong with Winnipeg? Yeah. Listen, listen, we're talking we're talking like, hey, like we know, like we're NHL players. Like the NHL players, sure they love hockey and they love playing hockey. It's their job, but they also humans outside of this, and they want sure. different things. Sure, it'd be great. Like I can say. Oh, I would go to any fucking team that drafted me because that's that's how much I I just want to play hockey. But that's not true. If I had the choice to go to Winnipeg, Calgary, L.A., New York, I'm not going to to the fucking bumfuck Canada. I'm, so if that's, that's true, then what difference here. would it make if you get Bedard or not? He's just going to leave when he can. Well, you're, you're still going to have RFA rights for a certain amount of time, right? You're still yeah. going to have a franchise. Yeah, you got to be able to build around him if you can't get anybody there. See, I mean, the the, the Flames are 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 worse all team. The Oilers have the pieces to win. They're missing a, a goalie and a, a defense. A defenseman, but, yeah. 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 I mean, at the, at the end of the day, all I'm saying is that if you just keep giving these franchise picks, you said grow the game. NHL does not want to grow the game. They want to grow their pocketbook. Uh, for one, when you say, oh, you can say that game, about any, any yeah, sports for sure. or as many so, sports organizations. When they say yeah, they want to yeah. grow the game, what they, what they mean is we want to, we want to grow fans. So they'll come spend money at our game. You and I are both college football fans or, sure. you know, we know how, we know how the, the money stuff works with all the realignment and all that shit. So, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, it, yeah. I mean, it, it, and, and listen, they're all the business at the end of the day. And that's why I, I, I was a huge college football fan and I still am a huge college football fan, but before it, it was way different than the NFL because the NFLs were playing for a paycheck and the college kids were playing for something else, something bigger than, than they, they like their college. They want a national championship. And, and now it's kind of come into play and you've seen the portal kind of take place and, and the uh, NIL kind of, deals and all that. Yeah. yeah. It's kind of tainted. I mean, you see, you see tampering charges where coaches are going and you know, it sounds like they're, they're being underhanded and saying, Oh, just jump in the portal and then come here. I mean, look, university of Oklahoma and Lincoln Riley. I, it's just one of those things. They took the Lincoln Riley took a quarterback from the university of Oklahoma that won the Heisman this year uh, and then left Oklahoma covered bare. And it was all because of money, right? Like we had our worst year in 25 years and it, you know, but anyway, all I'm saying is that I didn't I just, mean I didn't mean to bring up bad stuff for you, man. No, sorry. no, no. It's, sorry, it's, sorry. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna cry myself to sleep tonight. Don't worry about <laughs> it. Uh, but all I'm saying is I I just think that there, there's so many teams that, that have if, if you're gonna keep giving them to a Chicago, let, no offense, Blackhawks fan, uh, if you're gonna keep giving them to a Chicago, if you're gonna give them to a a New York, if you're gonna give these franchise players to what seems like big market teams, that's going to make them more marketable and make the league more marketable. What's the point of being a fan of the small market teams? Well, I mean, it, it depends right. on if you believe the conspiracy theory that you're that you're peddling here, though. I, I believe this, yeah. or I wouldn't say it. Yeah. I, no, I, I, believe, I believe that you believe it, but it yeah. is a conspiracy theory. I mean, you look at like Sidney Crosby. Uh, they, they, you know, the the Penguins got good right around the time that they couldn't. They 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 were possibly relocating. This yeah, well, they were like they were fucking Tennessee. bankrupt. I think. <laughs> uh, yeah, but yeah, and, and so what did the league do? We give them the most marketable player. Now all of a sudden they're a viable franchise. They got fans that want to that love winning because everyone loves winning when your team winning. So you're going to go watch them. You got a marketable young talent, yeah. the best player in the world. And so when you think about it, there's too many things uh, that make sense coincidentally uh, to say that, Hey, this conspiracy theory might have some merit to it. Uh, I, I don't think it's random. I, I just don't, I mean, I just don't, but I, but then on the flip side, people say, well, why, why would, why would then NHL want Connor McDavid to go to Edmonton after they already had, I mean, that's a good question. I mean, Edmonton's a, a 
is still a traditional powerhouse. Yeah, it's a hockey town for sure, obviously, Um, big time. And so, you know, when you want, and so when you want to market the game, and we start talking about uh, uh, Phoenix or Arizona, well, listen, what, what, why wouldn't they just let Phoenix die? Because it's not making money. They're got, they're in a five thousand seat arena. Uh, right. No, Gary Bettman wants hockey. There's there. a huge the whole yeah. Phoenix situation, Arizona situation. You talk about conspiracies. There's definitely a lot that's going on behind the scenes. That's been going on behind the scenes for the last like fifteen years that no one talks about. But you talk to any of us locals that are born and raised there, we'll tell you we're not even just born and raised. The amount of people that have moved there from colder climates, right? You're talking about like, would you rather go live in Winnipeg or do you want to go live in Florida? Same thing with Arizona. We get so many transplants from the northern states and from Canada that they love hockey. Yep. It's just like where they put them, the travel situation. The Coyotes could do so much better if something wasn't being tampered with. It's almost like they've set them up to fail, but they're still keeping them there. And as like, I mean, this is my blood as an Arizona and being a Coyotes fan. It's like, just do what you need to do. And you guys can like in 10 years, they could be a completely different team. They can bring the market back. They can fill up the stadiums because they've got enough people between the central city, the central Valley and the East Valley to fill up those stands. But they're just so broke. They can't bring in the good players. Like I'm looking at watching the games at my alma mater, Arizona state. And it's like the stands aren't even full. But it's but like, why would you go and spend 115 bucks on a seat to watch a loss and to watch like mediocre players? Now, don't get me wrong. I love the guys that have played in Arizona that have stayed there and worked their butts off because, I mean, granted, they are getting paid to do it. But there's definitely a situation that's going on that we're out there that rubs us all wrong. That when everyone's like, oh, just dump them and move them, we're like, no, just give them the sh- give them the shot that they really deserve and stop tampering like stop being so dramatic what tampering are you talking about (sighs) they just don't like they can just build an arena in scottsdale and they would be fine but they don't hey and what better way to get support for that arena in scottsdale that than to give them connor bedard and have austin matthews be there and have the two two of the the, yeah yeah you know you know what i'm saying like it it, that's where i'm saying the conspiracy theory does have some merit and we'll see i I think that's what's going to happen or maybe Chicago. I mean, are Chicago. You guys, is, are you guys flat earthers? Be honest. No, no. I think the I think the the Earth is actually rectangular. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. That, that actually sorry, checks out. Are we right now? <laughs> uh, no, but I I, no, I, 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 I I don't believe in many. Can I don't believe in nine eleven conspiracy. I don't. But I believe that it, it, that businesses do this stuff to benefit themselves. And I think that right now, if 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 if, if you're gonna get rid of things that don't work, that you should get rid of, right? Arizona would be one of the places that doesn't work. So why not get rid of it? Well, Gary, they haven't given it a fair shot. The well, money is in Scottsdale. Wants, All the snowbirds are in Scottsdale, but none I, of us are driving two and a half hours to go to the West Valley to go yeah. to a game and watch them lose. Absolutely not. I'll drive 30 minutes. So you're proving but, my point is that now Gary Bettman needs something to, to make that, make it happen. And, and what, yeah. what way more marketable thing than to give him Connor Bedard, Matthews is, is going to leave Toronto. I think they can't give him that much money and he's going to go with a local boy in Bedard just out there running things in the desert. And so like, we need to get that arena. Look what we got now. So that's basically it. And, and, and I want to say like some people are saying, listen, small market teams, uh, were better. Uh, the small market teams that are winning their way out of the first picks are doing just fine. Hey, listen, good on you. You're proud of, Hey, we haven't had a first over pick, but listen, for me as a Flames fan, I would rather have Bedard and then give myself a franchise player moving forward. The Flames don't have a franchise player, right? Flames don't have a McDavid. The Flames don't have a Sidney Crosby. The Flames don't have a Tage Thompson. Uh, the Flames don't ha- don't have that. And so it's it's nice to say, like, the Carolina Hurricanes are really good, right? They're a good hockey team. Great mm-hmm. hockey team, as a matter of fact. So you're, the fans don't really care. They, they, they're, not, they're not just mediocre like the Flames are. Me as a, a fan that invests time, like, I want, I want my Flames to have a chance. And I'm not saying I want the Flames to j- just – hand them Bedard on a silver platter. I would love that. But I think that there's other teams in, in this kind of, in the same, like the San Jose Sharks, uh, you know, they're, they're kind of in, in, in their mediocre stage and, and they need a franchise player. Uh, and I'm ducks kind of say, I mean, I hate the ducks just with a passion, just no offense to duck fans. Just when the flames went like 27 years without being able to win in that arena, it just kind of made me hate them with Corey Perry. who's a puke, uh, gets <laughs> laugh. who was great. Uh, you know, just one of those things, but anyway, so that's been, we, we, 
basically went from a beer league podcast to an NHL podcast. And I think we should probably table that yeah. uh, and, and bring it back next week uh, and talk about more. Uh, and maybe I'll find some more NHL conspiracies to rant about. Yeah, and it's not no, really I think that's a good, that could be your new segment. It's just what I feel. And I'm not saying I'm 100% right, but the people that believe me, let's start a cult and start donating money so we can fight the fucking authority. Let's fucking do it. Rage against the machine. Who are, you, who are you fighting? I don't know. know. The machine. The machine. <laughs> is it the like him and like two is old ladies GM? that is are like, the, is, is this the... where Prince from Kenya is? I'm raging <laughs> against the machine. Money. That's all I'm doing. That's all I'm doing. I'm just raging. Um, but anyway, so that's that. Okay, let's move on to, uh, we don't even have a, we, we need, I guess we need some theme music for J- Jess's genitals or mm-hmm. general <laughs> genitals or, or whatnot. But uh, basically- it's a very what, misleading what, title. I'm not going to yeah. lie. It's yeah. a very misleading title. There's not a lot that rhymes with Jess. So genitals, geriatric. Um, well, I mean, that doesn't even rhyme. You mean okay. alliteration. No, 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 sorry. Alliteration. Yeah. 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 What would you say? It alliterates with Jess? Oh, yeah. Uh, right. Yeah. I, I don't Does know. that work? I don't know. All right. Here we go. I'm going to play this thing. This is a, a question sent in from a, from a viewer and they don't, okay. it, they, it's anonymous. I don't know why they didn't put their name, but maybe they don't want to be embarrassed. All right, here we go. Okay. Turn it all the way up. Get ready to go. Let's do it. Bull sin on the BLPA big show. Hey, my question is for Jess. Uh, I've been playing on a co-ed beer league team for a while now. And the girl that I'm dating asked me if we share a locker room. And I tried to defuse that bomb and tell her that it's not just tits flopping and dick swinging, um, that everyone's respectful. She wasn't having it. She went nuts on me, um, got really cranky. So my question is, um, how do you feel about co-ed locker rooms? Are you just in there measuring guys and passing out trophies? Thanks. (laughs) Well, one, I can look at Jess right now. I can look at her right now. And this is no offense to Jess. She is a a world-class certified grade A meat gazer. So I'm going to answer that yeah. question for you right now. Uh, but wh- what do you think about uh, dudes in a co-ed dressing room? Wife is mad because she thinks, uh, you know, there's uh, meat gazing going on or maybe a little some, tomfoolery. And some bouncy titties. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, this question is like, actually, like I kind of have a lot of feedback on this one, actually, okay. because I've been on both sides on it. Um, so I started playing hockey in my early 20s, um, D-League, which out in Phoenix, by the way, um, and we probably had about um, 25% of the locker room, fourth of the locker room was actually female. So what, to me, a locker room there wasn't necessarily like a locker room where like, where you're like taking off and on your clothes. Like no one really, I don't think anybody even showered. It was a place to just like put on your gear, take off your gear. So I didn't see anybody's anything when I was playing in that league because there was just too much um, intermingling going on. And now when I came and play here in North Carolina, so of course, like I play on like a women's team, which, you know, we're women. So like, that's, we shower, we need to get in and out. And that's a whole different story, but being co-ed, um, playing here in Raleigh, um, I don't have the same amount of women in my leagues than I do the men. And one of my teams, I actually would change in a separate locker room. Um, cause I had a friend that was on the team who changed separately. And I asked her like, well, why do you change outside the locker room? Like there's so much camaraderie that you're missing by not being in there before the game and after the game. And she's like, well, I do it to be respectful. Like one to be respectful of people's girlfriends and wives because they don't really know what's going on inside the locker room. She's also like, she also like fully changes. She comes in in her street clothes and changes up everything else. So like, it's just easier that way. Um, and I told her, we're like, well, like, if I go and sit and now I just go sit in the men's in the locker room with everyone else. Um, but I've had it happen two ways. I have definitely have been the girlfriend of a guy who plays for a beer league team who has straight single women in the locker room that intentionally strip down to their bras and their thongs. Um, and I wasn't cool with that. Um, but I've also had it be, and like for me, <laughs> I keep my sports bra. Like if I'm in my sports bra and I always keep on like booty shorts, Right. So as I'm like taking off my rink pants and putting on my, my Jill, you're still not seeing my underwear because I'm trying to be respectful. But that's also because I've also have been in that boat. Right. Of like, I didn't like it that the little girls were kind of being a little skanky skank. Um, now I have also dated someone who was in a locker room with women who um, with lesbians who just didn't care and thought it was fun to take off their bras and hang with their tits flopping all about because they think it's funny to watch the guys go googly eyed. And again, like, I don't really think that's 
like respectful. I kind of understand the humor in that, but now it's not really respectful. But I definitely try to not gaze at the meat, but I definitely <laughs> do get to check out those geriatric genitals from time to time um, because they get presented quickly. Um, but most of the time I try to look away and I try to be respectful and but then again, like I think some guys just like like it that I'm in there and I don't know, maybe kind of like tickles their what? pickle, so to speak. <sighs> that the opportunity you're tickling their pickles too? Yeah, wow, that's that's yeah. interesting. Listen, I, I've been in a lot of <laughs> locker rooms in my day, a, a lot. And uh, listen, I, I've I've had girls go full naked while you're talking to them. And then I, I've had people that, oh, I gotta go change another room. Guys the same way. There's guys that walk around with their dongers just, you know, just going. Sure. And yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, like we're, we're all adults and we I've, seen, I've seen tits and vagine, uh, bobs and vagine many times in my life. And I've seen donger many times in my life. And so it's just like, oh, there it is. Like, it's just skin. I don't, I don't know what the big deal is. Like, I've never seen like a, a two single people just start fucking in the dressing room. Like I just, that's not a I thing. I haven't seen that either. Yeah. Yeah. So at the end of the day, I can't believe you guys have never it's... seen that. Oh my God. That used to happen all the time. <laughs> Hey, Chicago, is this like your rank your rank director problems? No wonder people complain <laughs> about you. Like I haven't ever seen it either. No one's ever been like, but hey, I, nice I, dick. I, and you're I, like, hey, I, nice tits. Let's go meet in the shower. Okay, like have, well, you know, it doesn't that, happen. You just exchange numbers and see each other later. Um lock the door, was, you know. Then, wait for but then, to why, leave. then why is you as a, a girl that sees girl, like then why are you why are you kind of uh, against it, right? You're saying, Oh well, you know, I was in there and the girls did this, like I, at the end of the day, like if, I, if I'm in a you said you were, yeah, you were dating someone and you had a problem with it. Why, why the jealousy there? Because it's intentional on the female's yeah. part. Well, you can't, you like can't if control I'm going to take off my shirt does. or show my ass, like I'm definitely showing it for a reason. I'm, and it's not necessarily like I want to like get laid. It's because I want people to look at me. Like if you're like, you're aware that you're in a co-ed situation and yet like a co-ed locker room. So you know somebody's gonna be looking if your nips start hanging out and you know telling well, you. Why it's do you care if you're, if you're in a relationship? Yeah, like it, you, like your like your dude is like you have to trust him. You know. Yeah, you oh, 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 it's not that I don't care. My dude is fine. It's her I got the problem with. Well, like if she your dude's should fine, not. Then who gives a shit what the girl does? Yeah, I mean, like, like if if he wants to go see titties that much, like he can go to Reddit. To be honest, I mean, titties are I mean, plenty. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. so for yeah, me, it's true. Like, some or just, just go old fashioned. Go to the local strip club. You know. Right. The, and the so that's rippers. consensual. Like you're saying, like you're showing up to the rink, you're going to play a game. You're there to play a sport. You're there to go drink some beer with your friends, yell at the refs, cry a little bit, however you want to. Here you we know. go with the refs again. <laughs> however you, you want your day to go. You're not like signing up to go to a strip club. You're not, you know, it's not consensual to say like, hey, is it okay if I take off my pants? Hey, is it okay if I show my tits? It's just like, you're just kind of you're doing it intentionally. Yes. And my guy can go see tits at a strip club if he wants to. Yeah. And that's on, that's on him. Um, but like you're, that's your, that's right. Like you're making that choice. And instead you're choosing to walk around with your dick out. You're choosing to walk around with your tits out. Now there is that whole argument of yes. Well, women, you're playing in a men's sport. If you don't want to see it, you shouldn't be in the locker room. And exactly. If I didn't want to see it, I wouldn't be in the locker room, but that's also why I look away because to me feeling that, joining that camaraderie, getting that camaraderie with my teammates by being in the locker room 20 minutes before the game. And then for half hour, hour after the game to me is more important with building our on ice chemistry than like needing to kind of look away for a few seconds as some good guy like goes and takes a shower or whatever. But it's, I think it's a gen, there should just kind of be this general level of respect where you, if you have other people in the locker room of the opposite sex or of, whatever gender status they prefer, you just be respectful, right? Because you don't know what people's situations are. You don't, some women just, I mean, like I play hockey, so I know it goes on in the locker room. I know there isn't like this massive orgy. I know that there's no, I'm not in the middle going like taking off my shirt and be like, eh, baby, let's go. But like wives don't know that. They just, they just think that there's like, oh, there's this like little hottie that's in there that's trying to steal my man. So it is a comfort level that you only really get to, I only have that level of comfort because I play. So yeah, I guess, I guess I like a girlfriend that's not a hockey player. Like good luck. Like you, that's just trust. Well, I mean, I don't know what to even tell this guy. I mean, for for me, like uh, I kind of live in like, like if, 
some girl's gonna pull her boobs out and I'm gonna see boob. Okay, so I saw a boob. Like, it, I mean, yeah. for me, it's seen it, boobs it, before. Yeah, I mean, right. it's, 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 listen, listen, I'm not, I'm not saying anything. I, love I guess boobs. I shouldn't be presumptuous. Yeah. I assume yeah. you saw you've yeah. seen no, boobs. Before. Listen, I love boobs. Yeah. I mean, that's just the way of the world. Everyone loves boobs, but it's not like I'm not going to my locker room to see boobs. And, and listen, I, right. I get it. But some people maybe like people being looked at them. So fucking take it off. If someone looks at you, then good. But for me, like I just stay, like I, I do my own thing. I, I get dressed and whatever. Right. But you know, I, I just, I, I don't, I don't understand why it's such a big deal to, to the out, outside world or even to you if whatever we were talking about, because yeah. at the end of the day, like we're all human beings. Like we all have these parts. They've seen these parts before. Uh, you know, if, if you can't control your urges because some chick is putting on a shirt and you see a, a, a nipple, well, you got yeah. bigger issues than, than playing beer league hockey. So uh, what I would say to this caller is, you know, t- tell your, tell your broad, is that what you guys call him? Like, yeah, the broad. I, don't think, I don't think you're supposed to say that, but tell, anyway, tell, let's do it. Tell your lady, tell your lady, Hey, this is not a big deal. I don't care. I've seen naked chicks on the internet. I'll probably look at naked chicks again tomorrow on the internet. You're not taking away the internet. <laughs> I'm sorry. That last comment was great. <laughs> uh, um, so at the end of the day, you know, if it's, this is going to be a problem and we got bigger issues. Yeah, you got uh, bigger issues. Really Honestly, no, for sure. invite your girlfriend in the locker room at some point. Be like, hey, come meet the guys real quick. Come smell it. Come see what the Ooh, locker room no, is like, you know? Because like that's not a really sexy environment when you go in there and you have that smell. Like we all know that we're like, mm, great. Have you watched? And let's your be gear honest. Most of the years? people in that locker room, most of those dudes, eh, they probably shouldn't be walking around with their tongs out. You know, it's like a nude beach. It's like a nude beach. Yeah, right? like, there's yeah. never hotties it's on a nude just, beach. It's always yeah. the people you don't want to look how at. Do you, you know? How do you know? Because well, I've been to I've been to beaches that you were allowed to be nude. I've never been to a nude beach. Did you take I your guess. Did you take your bathing suit off? Nah. No. And I was in the best shape of my life. It was my honeymoon, but no, I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to do that to the ladies, you know. <laughs> it's just, it's just in. All right, well, that's Jess's genital. All right, well, that's a good <laughs> start. It's a good start. Yeah, uh, dress uh, is a big like, thing. Most of the time, the locker rooms are fine. Mm-hmm. It's only a few yeah. people that kind of taint the situation, and um, you, but you usually hear about it. Yeah, if you have any more orgy questions about the locker room, send them to us. Yeah, uh, we'll get Jess's opinion on these things, and uh, we'll move right along. So that went way more serious than I was expecting it to. Yeah, I mean, I, <laughs> hey, I, no, I like it. I like it. I I thought you were just gonna make fun of people's dongs, but you didn't do that, and I, that's nice. Yeah, I mean, I've that's Listen, the kind of part of the reason why I look away. Honestly, like yeah, very yeah, rarely is it actually like a good sight. Listen, yeah. God, God gave us. All he's given us, like, can't get any more. Okay, right. what do you, what do you, what do you? Well, I mean, there's surgical me? options. I don't, but they're not as as like breast implant. Like, if you're not happy with your boobies, go get them pumped up or yeah. jacked down or whatever you do. Yeah. But dudes just aren't lining up to, you know, get dong implants. I mean, it's just it is the way of the world, right? Just, I mean, if they were, you know. Uh, but nonetheless, <laughs> that's, Hey, that's our new show. Uh, way more dong. I mean, oddly enough, we talked, we didn't, Oh, we did talk about poop. Cause Jess said something about torpedoes between her missiles, between her legs or something. Yeah, We did get our yeah. poop. We did get our poop yeah, talks. We got some poop talking. Um, but other than that, I mean, that's the show. And I, we're, we, we're, we're, we're making an effort every week. We're, we're good. We're, we're treating this way more serious yeah, now. Yeah. Yeah, well, no effort. We're just treating it more serious to, to do it. We're not, we're going to give way less effort than ever within the show. Uh, and when, <laughs> when, when we come to an impasse, we're just going to talk about boobs and dongs. So that's basically exactly. the actual, the, the B in it's beer league, penis and ass. That's what BLPA stands for. Uh, <laughs> um, our boob. Boobies, boob. lips, yeah. penis and ass. Boobs, lips, penis oh, and ass. Oh, boobs, labia, penis and ass. There we go. Uh, that's that's it. solid. Okay, well, great show. Welcome. All right, well, hey, that's our show for us. Thank you guys for joining us. Hope you guys will join us next week. Uh, we'll be live. We'll actually, we're actually going to have uh, a few more interviews, but we're going to do those off the live segment. But I hope you guys enjoyed it uh, from Kev. Kev, you want to tell them where they can find you? Yeah, I have a, I have a comedy podcast called History Defeats Itself. Um, we just uh, we talk about how people never learn from our history. And uh, you can find it on all the podcast players out there and check us out. And thank you to all the people in the comments for being fairly gentle you know, on me, you know, fake me making fun of me. And I, someone made fun of my plant and I don't understand that at all because <laughs> I feel like, I feel like plants are, they're good for us. You know, aren't they? Some people hate plants. Why There's do you plant hate haters. plants? What do you got? What do you got against plants? Everybody has I mean, they probably shed his leaves in the locker room. I don't know. 
Yeah, no, maybe, just self. Maybe. I'm gonna bring some plants to sit beside me. We're just gonna like have a jungle. Yeah, at some Let's do it. I don't think it's <laughs> yeah, a no ficus, Kyle. I don't think it's a ficus. I'm gonna have to ask my wife, but I don't know uh, exactly what it is. Ficus cat. It spruces up the office. Yeah, it's spruced. Spruced. Ooh, good one. Hey, who's responsible? Just... I know who has a map on their wall. What are they a history teacher or geography teacher? Yeah, he does a history <laughs> podcast. He's got this. Is just what goes in. Okay, Jess, where can they find you? What's wrong with the three panel? Map? All right, never mind. Talk next, next episode. So next episode. insulting of you. You can find me at Love Snowball on Twitter and Jessica Rachel on Facebook and otherwise in your random locker hockey locker rooms, mostly Me keeping gazing. my shirt on. Me you gazing. just walk into random hockey locker rooms and yeah, yes. did you not did you miss the beginning of this when we were talking oh, about dancing that's right. when in you were the doing room? the dance party, right? The dance yeah. party. I don't turn uh, down a good dance party. And you can find the show at the BLPA. You come join our group, come play in our tournaments, do all that fun stuff. You can find me at uh, Nicker Jones on Twitter, the Nicker Jones on Instagram, because that one bastard still took my user handle a long time ago. But other than that, guys, we appreciate you joining us. Hope you keep joining us. Hope we get more consistent. You see us all the time. Uh, nothing else to say, but uh, be good or be good at it.